Well, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's a happy day for me, not only just to celebrate the holiday, but also because I got my vintage Omega Constellation back from service. So in this episode of Gear Playtime, I'm going to be telling you the trials and tribulations, the agony and the ecstasy of getting a vintage Omega serviced. So before we get started, let me just show you the watch real quick and tell you about it. This is an Omega Constellation from about 1958. The reference is 285211C. This is a 35 millimeter Constellation in stainless steel. It's an automatic, it's not a bumper watch. It has caliber 505, which is a beautiful automatic movement. And as you can see, there's no date. When you're talking about getting a vintage watch serviced, Regardless of the make or the model, there's just a ton of pitfalls. First of all, the obvious pitfall is sending it to a service center where they're not going to respect what's distinctly vintage about the watch. They'll polish out all of the distinct character out of the case. They'll swap out the dials. They'll change the hands, change the crown. Any number of things that could very much destroy the character of the watch if you weren't vigilant to make sure that you don't send it to such a place. Now the other danger is that if you send it to a place that's going to care for the distinct patina and vintage aspects of the watch, that they're going to charge you an arm and a leg to do the service while maintaining the requests that you have to maintain the watch in its original condition. So it was really key to me to find a place that would respect the originality of this watch and do it in a way that would be reasonable given the overall value of the watch, which is not astronomical. This is not a million dollar Submariner or something. If I wasn't gonna send it to Omega directly because of the high costs, the long turnaround time, and the possibility of things getting messed up, which in my estimation, reading a number of accounts on forums, were things that I would have to be especially vigilant for, then it was a matter of finding a good aftermarket watch repair person. Basically finding a watchmaker that would be able to do the work in the way that I wanted it to be done. Now the place that came the most highly recommended out of all of the aftermarket service centers was Nesbitt's in Seattle and I gathered that information from Watch You See, from Time Zone, and from a couple other forums that I looked at. February 17th, 2016. I'm sending off my Omega Constellation for service. I'm going with Nesbitt's watch service in Seattle because Omega enthusiasts on the forum seem to be of consensus that these guys do an outstanding job with vintage Omega servicing. All right, we've got this thing packed up. Let's see how long it takes to get it back. I did specify on the repair sheet that I only want the watch to have its movement serviced. I want the case and the dial to be preserved. Although I did say they could clean the case because it's kind of grimy. Now once I got the Constellation sent off, you might have thought that the story was over. That it would have been just a simple matter of waiting for this well-regarded and reliable service center to turn the watch around. And initially that's what it was looking like, that Nesbitt's was going to take care of me really well. They were very prompt in their response when they received the watch, and within about a week I had an estimate of what the watch was going to need. The problem was the service that they wanted to provide wasn't at all what I was looking for. In fact, the service order was much more expensive than I was initially anticipating based on the prices that were kicked around on the forums, and they wanted to do a number of things that I was just simply not interested in at all. Now, the folks at Nesbitt's were extremely courteous, very informed, and very easy to communicate with. So I can't complain about Nesbitt's, and in fact, I totally recommend them if you're looking for a top-notch, highly regarded service center for your Omegas or Rolexes. The problem was not with Nesbitt's per se, it was just that, in my view, they weren't going to provide the service that I wanted. They were going to provide what they saw, what was fit for the watch. Now, to some collectors, some of those repairs would have been worthwhile, but to me, they were definitely not what I was looking for. I wanted to keep the watch as original as possible. Now, not only have I been collecting watches for about 10 years, I've been an eBay user for probably close to 15 years. One thing that's always been available for watch collectors on eBay are vendors 
who do services. So you basically pay for the service on eBay, send the watch to them, and they'll service it and send it back to you. Now the advantage of a lot of the eBay vendors that I saw was that they're very reasonably priced and a lot of them came with very solid rankings. That's one thing you can check on eBay very easily is the feedback scores. Well, looking on eBay as well as in a few other places that were recommended on the forums, finally I came upon TLC Watch Repair based out of McClellan, Texas. Now what I liked about them was that they had very solid feedback on eBay and they also gave a lot of detailed personal information about how to contact them. They gave a phone number and an email. So what I actually ended up doing was exchanging a number of texts with the owner of TLC Watch Repair, and he was a really friendly guy, very knowledgeable, and he promised a very fast turnaround, less than a week. So I decided to contact Nesbitt's and have them send that watch to Texas, with the hope that I'd be able to get the watch service exactly the way that I wanted, which was just getting the movement service, not worrying about any of the other patina or finishing of the case or the dial. TLC was great once they got it, and they sent me a number of pictures, including what was specifically wrong with the watch. So what are some of the lessons that we can learn from this? First of all, going with the most highly recommended place might not yield the results that you're necessarily expecting if you have very narrow expectations or very specific needs. In my case, I wanted to maintain the perfect originality of the watch as much as possible. And Nesbitt's, in their view, had to do certain things to service the watch up to their standards, which would alter the originality. For me, that was a problem. Say to a place that was very solidly regarded but didn't have as much prestige as Nesbitt's meant that I was paying an incredible amount less. Basically, you're talking about the price of a watch if you think about it. So to me, the big winner of all of this is, first of all, the fact that I didn't pay more than $200 to get this awesome Omega Constellation fully serviced and working perfectly now. The other winner here is the old craft of watchmakers, the Guild of Watch Repair. In many ways, mechanical wristwatches are a kind of obsolete technology. And what we're seeing on the whole in the watch market is the service of these old esoteric technologies are themselves becoming more stratospheric, more ivory tower, more reserved, and you end up paying a lot more. Fortunately, in my case, this is an example of a small business tradesman who has managed to build a solid reputation for himself and has done a great job servicing this need that I had that was very specific without having to charge me an arm and a leg. So the big story for me is not just that I was able to save a bunch of money getting my watch serviced by going to a smaller businessman, but that I was actually able to tap into the old local trade crafts and guilds that watchmaking used to have as a much more normal thing. This is something to celebrate that we have enough craftsmen around that are still able to perform these tasks without being treated like some sort of brain surgeon or specialist. Because in fact, these watches have an inherent intelligibility and accessibility that makes them something that we should hope to see a much more revived and robust tradecraft industry that surrounds them. All right, well, make sure to let me know your service stories in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And give me a little virtual toast and a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.